what we're dealing with is not really a migration or a refugee problem. It's a conscious attempt by Turkey to use migrants and refugees as geopolitical pawns to promote its own uh, interests. The people who try to cross uh, into Greece are not people who come from Syria. They don't come from Idlib. They've been living in Turkey for a long period of time. Most of them uh, talk uh, Turkish fluently. They've been fully supported by the Turkish government uh, in terms of uh, uh, the Turkish government providing transfer for them to get to the border. And of course, Greece is doing what any sovereign state has a right to do to protect its border for any illegal crossings. This is what we have been doing. This is what we will continue to do. Now, obviously, we have seen over the past hours uh, increased tension on the borders. There have been attempts to actually burn down the fence that we have. Uh, there have been uh, numerous uh, attempts to throw tear gases on our troops. So I'm afraid this is a constant and very systematic provocation on Turkey's uh, behalf, which has nothing to do with the plight of these, uh, of these people. Uh, they're being used by Turkey. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is, a, you know, the result is the scenes that you will currently see on the Greek-Turkish border. It may be, that may be the cause as seen, but the, res the result is that you are the ones getting, to some extent, the blame and the bad uh, reaction. When we see the sort of pictures that we saw last week, where it is your forces of one sort or another who are engaged in stopping them, and it creates ugly scenes, and you get the blame. Well, I don't see why we should be getting any blame for something we've publicly said that we will do. We have every right, Richard, to protect uh, our borders, and this is exactly what we, what we do. We were not the ones who initiated this crisis. Uh, we were not the ones who encouraged people to cross uh, into Greece illegally. Uh, and frankly, you know something, this is a country that has, uh, over the past uh, years, accepted hundreds of thousands of migrants and refugees. We've opened up our homes, we've opened up our hearts. And it is totally, totally unacceptable as a prime minister of this country uh, to be accused of not properly treating these people uh, in times of great uh, need. I mean, Greece has demonstrated its humanism uh, throughout this crisis. But what we're not willing to do is we're not willing to uh, engage uh, in uh, a process by which uh, another country uh, systematically uses and abuses these people to try to send them uh, across the border. Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the methodology and the methods that we, we use, we have not used uh, any sort of excessive force, and we're always reacting, we're never initiating uh, in terms of uh, uh, responding to the provocations that have taken place on the border. Do you see the events of the last week as either endangering or revoking, in, in a practical sense, the EU-Turkey agreement following on from 2016? Uh, Richard, right now, let's be honest, the agreement is dead. And it's dead because Turkey has decided to completely violate the agreement because of what happened in Syria. Turkey has an obligation to stop people reaching the coastlines and it has an obligation to do whatever it can to uh, contain uh, the illegal smugglers uh, and prohibit people from illegally crossing into Greece. This is exactly what the agreement says. And Turkey right. has been doing the exact opposite. They have assisted, systematically assisted, both at land and at sea, uh, people in their effort to cross into Greece. So, um, on the other hand, I've been public about acknowledging the fact that Turkey um, has also borne a big uh, um, uh, burden by hosting millions of refugees and I've always been willing to support Turkey in this effort. But this is not going to happen, Richard, right. uh, under a situation of blackmail. Uh, Europe is not going to be blackmailed uh, over, uh, over this problem by Turkey. Mr. Erdogan needs to recognize that. Mr. Erdogan needs to stop um, uh, being uh, the, the instigator of fake news. Um, uh, people apparently, according to the Turkish uh, minister, hundreds of thousands of people have already crossed uh, uh, into Greece. There are completely false accusations in terms of what's happening at the border. So we're not the ones escalating uh, this conflict, but we have uh, every right, Richard, and I will continue to okay. do so, to protect our sovereign um, uh, borders. Uh, uh, we've succeeded in doing so, and we'll continue to succeed doing so in the future. Prime Minister, will you indulge me and just answer one or two questions, if I may, on coronavirus and the seriousness of this situation? And what, Prime Minister, you might wish to see happen at a European level? It seems, seems as if this is on the verge of becoming a pandemic. 
Look, um, this is a, uh, you know, obviously a very serious uh, issue and we need a coordinated European uh, response. I think we've done whatever we can within, within our capacity uh, to contain this problem as much as possible. Um, uh, we haven't had a single death yet uh, in, in Greece from uh, coronavirus, but we know that this is a problem that is going to, uh, is going to spread. Uh, obviously, coordination at the European level um, uh, would be most welcome, but this is also a question of speed and every member state needs to assess its own peculiarities and address the problem um, uh, speedily and by taking the necessary measures. Where I think we need more European response uh, is in mitigating the economic consequences uh, of this outbreak. Uh, it is very clear, Richard, we've discussed this before, that uh, you know, even before the coronavirus hit us, monetary policy has reached its limits. And this is a time to take a hard look uh, at how fiscal policy can help us alleviate the pressures on growth that will inevitably uh, occur as a result of this outbreak. So where I expect more European coordination is clearly on the financial, on the economic side, where I do hope that the next Eurogroup uh, is going to be more proactive uh, in terms of containing the economic damage, right. which inevitably will, uh, will occur as a result of this outbreak.